presents uh, an interesting uh, an interesting paper about uh, so the robots yes so she's uh, she's great so the title of this paper is robots as my future colleagues challenging attitudes towards collaborative robots by means of experience based workshops so this paper is very interesting from my side so the authors examine the effects of a two day educational robotics workshop on students' attitude about the, the role of robots in their workplace and homes in an imaginative future of 10 years from now, okay? So I invite Yannicka to express and to explain the results of these interesting works. So as usual, so you have more or less 15 minutes and five minutes for questions. Thank you. Thank you. I'm Janika Leosta from Tallinn University, Estonia, and as you heard, I'm going to present a research paper about robots as future colleagues. Robots of different levels of intelligence, including those with artificial intelligence, are infiltrating seamlessly to several workplaces. And before you can even notice, your human colleagues are replaced with some collaborative robots performing restlessly seven days and 24 hours with a warranty of five or more years. They don't have real emotions and they don't get sick or tired. So mainstream media is full of headings that one day one could lose their job to some robot. No wonder that there is no reason for the normal person to be happily waiting for this one day that might arrive in less than 10 years in most work areas. Even if you are not afraid of losing your work position, you could still have preconceptions that being colleague uh, with a robot is uncomfortable uh, to you uh, because of the weakening of interpersonal relationships or that you will be marginalized because you are not as smart or as strong or as hardworking. Uh, the research has described that one of the vulnerable fields is education. Uh, this is the field where people interact closely and intensively and where there are more social than functional tasks. It is suggested by the literature uh, that people's attitude towards robots depend on their awareness about the possibilities and features of modern robotics. Also, previous experience with robots tends to increase positive attitudes towards them and leads to higher robot acceptance by people. Based on these notions, we propose hypotheses that interactive educational activities such as specialized workshops help people to overcome such negative attitudes towards robots. And we formed two research questions. Do participants' intentions about collaboration with robots in the future change after an experience-based workshop? And second, what are the participants' suggestions on improvement of the experience workshop design? Before moving on to the design of the workshop, just some definitions to remind us what is considered a robot and what does artificial intelligence mean. Uh, usually, a robot is thought of as a machine that is capable of doing something automatically. Robots are usually designed for some specific task that determine its appearance, smartness level, or other features. How they relate to their operating environment how they interact and collaborate with users, how their physical appearance is designed, and what is their primary function. These are all characteristics that considerably influence the attitude of potential users towards their future colleagues. As robots are increasingly driven by artificial intelligence, which allows robots to perform tasks that normally would require human intelligence, we should also take into the consideration that AI can be weak, uh, that is, 
the robot simulates human intelligence or strong that the robot is able to optimize its behavior based on its format behavior and experience. So first we selected two platforms of educational robotics that are similar to industrial robotics. Uh, these platforms uh, use rather weak AI, but they are affordable by their price. So the first one is Ergo. Poppy Ergo is a sm small and cute 3D printed robotic arm that is designed for classroom use. And this robot can be programmed in several uh, visual programming languages. And the second robot was Clearbot, and that is designed for teaching the principles of uh, wheeled mobile robotics and computer vision. And Clearbot programming is uh, done via robot operating system ROS. First, uh, uh, we used uh, design-based research principles and two interaction iterations, and we designed three behaviors for both robots. And then we designed the workshop content divided into two days, having two week break in the middle. We introduced one robot per day, and we also invited to give the manufacturer of the robot to give a speech. Before starting robotic behavior experiments, we delivered in a micro lecture form some theoretical background and knowledge about robots and sustainability and about ethical, social and other issues uh, related to the robots as future colleagues. The last part of the seminars was reserved for hands-on activities with robots, trying out example behaviors and trying to envisage the real situations if these type of behaviors would be useful in a student's future work context. Uh, before the uh, Sorry, these are also some questions had shown in the screen and uh, the data was uh, collected before and after the workshop. And we asked participants about their attitudes towards the robots in their hypothetical future. We used only two questions as you see on the screen. And the students had to think about how their professional and personal life will look like in 10 years from now. And what role do they see intelligent, intelligence robots to playing in it? Uh, our first research question was related to participants' attitudes towards the robots. As a quantitative as qualitative content analysis with uh, closed coding for analyzing the answers was revealed, there were some differences in attitudes before and after the workshop. The participants' answers prior the, to the workshop indicated that in workplace settings, the majority of participants, 63%, perceived robots as possible colleagues and 44% of participants viewed robots as tools, and 31% of participants considered robots to be friends. However, when we move to the home, the majority of participants, in total 88%, saw robots as tools only, and quarter of respondents considered robots as potential friends, and 25% percent of respondents perceive robots as potential house servants. Only one male participant considered robots as family friends. Uh, the answers after the conducted workshop uh, were somewhat different. And as you see from the screen, now in the workplace settings, the robots were considered mostly as tools and the status of a colleague was reduced. And robots were also seen a little bit more friendly. And uh, at home, when you see the robots were now almost seen as uh, tools, then servants, and actually less than a quarter of participants considered them as a friends or and none considered as a family member. 
Our second question uh, was uh, related to the improvement of the workshop uh, design. Uh, actually, all respondents implied that the workshop had, uh, had had a positive impact on their preconceptions. Yet, as many, many of our participants had no previous first-hand experience with robots or programming, they found it difficult to construct a comprehensive understanding about the collaborative robots based on only one workshop. I am sorry, I forgot to mention that the students we had as a sample, they all were non-ICT students. So most of them didn't have any experience uh, with coding and uh, it's uh, some, somehow related to our previous presentation. So what were the improvements? Uh, the, the participants answered, uh, indicated following. First, and no wonder, the material should be designed to be used by the people with no previous experience, experience with robotics, avoiding advanced terminology and coding, while providing more details in areas where beginners, beginners have less knowledge. Second, teamwork should be carried out in small groups in order to provide participants with more individual and personal hands-on experience. Third, instead of starting with a theoretical overview, it is better to have a short introduction first. And fourth, uh, participants suggested that the workshop material should be based on the actual workshop content, as we used different robot behaviors in advertising materials. Uh, and during the workshop, we had different behaviors. And fifth, uh, some participants pointed out that, that the workshop should also discuss potential malfunctions of the robots, as this will, be, will help to reduce the anxiety of interaction with robots. As I mentioned before, uh, we didn't use uh, industrial robots, we used educational platforms uh, that were affordable, they were development platforms, and yes, they were malfunctioning. So, uh, based on our research, I would share some cautious optimism that specialized workshops could effectively lead participants to become aware of various promising opportunities of their robotic co-workers in the possible future. And as we saw, our participants from non-ICT fields were not hostile towards robots. They considered having robots as their colleagues at workplaces and tools or servants at home. Uh, yet, when considering social cultural contexts, intelligence doesn't make robots equal to humans. And it wasn't at least surprising for me that men and women had different attitudes and also cultural and socioeconomic background may play a role in these attitudes. I think that organizing uh, short hands-on workshops while including manufacturers or industry uh, might help to understand the limitations and the opportunities of these emerging technologies. And I would like to bring out maybe main key takeaways from this research from my perspective. So first, it is important uh, to prepare students and other people for future life. Second, we can support people to shape their understanding about the role of robots. Third, we should allow people to have a say when shaping policies, including robots in the future. Uh, fourth, uh, by designing uh, workshops for people with little or no previous experience with advanced robotics, it results in increase in people's technical and pedagogical content knowledge about these robots. And I think that is a good thing. Of course, there were several limitations of the study and I myself consider maybe the biggest one that we, we didn't use humanoid, so robot-like social robots this time, but the aim of the research was also to show 
that enhancing the understanding of robotics for beginners in the field doesn't require always expensive professional robotics platforms. Thank you. So thank you, Yannika. So the paper is very, very, very interesting. Any question? Okay, so I have one. So it's just a curiosity and it is uh, more or less related to the gender problem, okay? So do you suppose that the differences between men and women are due to inherent gender differences? Uh, so I mean, or perhaps more iterations with robots could have reduced these differences? Uh, as our sample uh, was uh, student uh, was consisting of students from non ICT fields, uh, then uh, we can we, we saw already these uh, differences without asking anything. For example, how they settled uh, here in research lab. Uh, when we started this experimenting with the robots, the women were afraid of even touching these robots. And so they like gave voluntary, like the leader position uh, in the group to the male, as they had their assumptions that although you don't uh, know the robot, either you are male, you should be leaving. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I think it's just, um, how to say, uh, it's related uh, in, in, the, in, in, in these pre-assumptions uh, and related to the gender in all technical fields. And I would say that before we start experiencing these robots just as our colleagues, they are considered as a highly technical field. And uh, I was also, how, how to say, I, I felt involved with the question you posed to the previous um, presenter, it was uh, Carla, yeah, it was Carla, that should we teach uh, meta-programming instead of programming? And yes, yes, yeah. we should, because uh, when we talk about, for example, social robots, okay, we didn't use them this time, and I consider it uh, maybe the biggest limitation. When we uh, uh, consider social robots or humanoid robots, you don't have to program them, you have to interact with them. And yet you have to know the limitations of robotic artificial intelligence, at least right now, that they have some pre-programmed capabilities. So this computational thinking or how could they react, it's useful uh, to know. And as you saw from the uh, answers or differences between this uh, pre and uh, post because we were demonstrating only these uh, industrial robots. They perceived these robots more like tools, but uh, I'm planning to <laughs> repeat the, the, not the same study, but in, 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 in the fall, I'm also going to let them play around with pepper and uh, other crazy things and there might be diff totally different uh, results uh, as I described. So the uh, functionality of the robots or the appearance of robots. So puppy-like robots, I would say everybody should have been taken as a friend or, or, or something, but this time mm -hmm. yeah, they were ugly. Yeah, yeah totally yeah, absolutely. Ugly. Ugly absolutely, ones, I but... agree. <laughs> I agree. Yeah. So uh, thank you, Yannika.